All right, welcome back. State government borrowed about 46.17 billion naira from three banks to pay salaries between January and June 2023. That's according to findings. Now, these findings were based on an analysis of the first half of this year. Financial statement of Access Bank, Fidelity Bank, and Zenith Bank Group revealed that. In the wake of the borrowings, how far can the these state governments go about paying salaries. International finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed joins me now to discuss further on the minimum wage salaries and of course all of the biting effect of um, the inflation in the country. Many thanks for joining me Mokhtar. Thank you. Uh, all right, the federal government uh, on Independence Day, that's the president uh, you know, ruled out some messages and um, and topped up um, salaries for federal civil servants. Uh, right now, the minimum, not minimum wage per se, in the next six months, they should be earning about um, 65,000 naira. In your opinion, is it a welcome development or is it just um, scratching the surface or we are just trying to look for temporary solutions uh, so that uh, the economy can keep running? What's going on, Mokhtar? I think you've said the two words <laughs> all together. Temporary solution. Um, you, 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 you first of all come. Is it, is it uh, um, just um, a temporary solution? Then a short term measure. I think those are the two words, and I think you've hit it mm -hmm. like that. I think the federal government is looking for a temporary solution and a short term measures by what they've just done. And we must not forget that minimum wage um, doesn't mean the state government will have to pay the same thing. Everybody is going to negotiate his own minimum wage. That is what, what true federalism is all about. Because the cost of living in Abuja and Lagos or the cost of living in KB and the cost of living in, uh, in Anambra and Anambra State is not the same. So every state will have its own precarity in terms of um, um, doing its minimum wage. But what it means is that uh, ordinarily the minimum wage, it, that means they should pay, should be what the federal government we pay. But again, based on those reports from those audited re uh, results, you and I know that that means it's apparently going to be very difficult because at the time they borrowed this money, the minimum wage was um, 18, I think it was 88, is it 18,000? So um, I think there's still a lot that um, the government will need to do or um, to, to get um, people excited about them, especially with the current hardship. Uh, I don't think it should be a problem for states to pay those money these days because they are beginning to earn more from the federation account. As a but they are still borrowing. So, Mukia, let subsidy. me just put in, sorry if you can hear me. You said you don't think it might be a problem for them to be able to pay this amount. But from reports that we got, some states actually borrowed in the past six months uh, to pay uh, salaries in the first half of this year. They were actually borrowing. Yes, I, that's what I'm saying. I, I think we need to look into that because most of them have not, they have received more than what they've used to receive before. Of, up to three to four times what they used to receive before. Mm. I remember when this president came to power, the highest sharing every state of between state, federal government, and local government ever had. They had that got about one point something trillion. One, the last one was one point one trillion that they were the three tiers of government share. So for me, I, I, I don't think uh, uh, they, they, I think why you see, let me tell you about the bank. The bank will borrow you money because they know you can pay. So definitely what it means is that once this money goes into this account, they are deducted from sources and then they will create As long as you have the means of paying, it's not a problem. But the challenge we we'll always have is that most of the state government, after they finish paying salaries, they are not able to do developmental projects in their state. So that for me is a major problem. And most of the state government, sometimes the commercial activities there is very low. And they, they, that means they have low um, internal generated revenue is also very low. In the only state that seems to be able to pay salaries and then internal generated revenue is still is Lagos uh, and, 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 uh, also, and uh, River State. All of that state seems to be struggling in the area of internal generated revenue. In the north, the only state that have been doing very well when it comes to internal generated revenue was um, Aduna State when the former governor, Matt Nassib Erufai, was there. So we don't know what is happening now, whether they are going to increase it or so. It's, it's a big problem from the state, for the states, but I think um, they should be equal to the tax with the kind of money they are receiving from the federation accounts. Okay, I haven't said that right now, but uh, even if we 
increased minimum wage to that particular amount to 65 years, in as much as um, labor is saying um, uh, they'd want them between 100 to 200,000 there. Let's compare side by side with um, the uh, inflation rate of 25%, you know, right now. You know, would that even be realistic, you know, to still be able to get staples in for the households? <laughs> Just the Officially, 25%. <laughs> Officially, what? Say that again. <laughs> Officially, it's 25%. <laughs> Officially. Yes. When you and I go to the market or when you go home, <laughs> I'm sure your wife <laughs> is telling you it's more than 25%. So, but let's look at that figure. 25% and then the federal government come, came up with a, with a fixed rate of 20, uh, 35000 Mm. If you look at that van by the minimum wage, then you see they've been an, a little bit increment. I think the minimum wage was eighteen thousand. I can't remember. Minimum wage. Minimum wage was um thirty thousand naira. So when you say that with thirty five thousand, the government can tell you that they have increased it by almost a hundred percent in terms of allowance. Let me tell you the challenge I have. Let me tell you, uh, mm. uh, uh, Justin. I think labor should negotiate on structural palliative rather than increment in salary because it's a simple analogy once workers start paying when they start paying them increased salary then the tax for government goes up mm. but we want to believe that this money that the federal government is planning to pay now it called it allowance so that allowance. your so allowance are not supposed to be taxed okay if it is like that then fantastic okay for the next six months i think it's a fantastic move but if they are going to add it together and tax, then if they are not taxing, what I said labor should be looking at, I said it on your program, was for labor, labor to begin to look at structural palliative. In terms of what? The that CNG is, buses or which one? Or taxes. Taxes, Say, okay. For the next two years, federal workers should not pay taxes. Tax holidays. Okay. Because when you do this structural palliative, it affects every worker. That is TUC. Nigerian Labor Congress, which is generally like the public, uh, the government-owned mm -hmm. sector. Because for me, that's the major challenge we have. Because when you go to negotiate, we're only looking at the federal government workers. We're not looking at the private sector. Yes, and, and how many of these business, of these companies' business are still stable to mm -hmm. be able to meet the minimum wage. So, if you want to do that to touch every Nigeria, then you need to look at the former sector. Most of these companies that their 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 employees pay taxes, and also they should benefit also from it. Those are structural reforms that touches everybody, and then you see the impact in the economy. But if you are negotiating now, the federal government workers can get that, the state cannot get it. It's it's a big challenge. Okay. So aside from the, the tax holidays, what about okay, fine, if if we don't get to tax so much on the income of um of um, civil servants. What about increasing taxes, uh, maybe for luxury items or maybe for VAT or something like that? How far would that go? See, um, um, Justin, when you increase taxes on all those things, you know they push it back to the consumer. And mm. even their luxury items, most of the people that run companies and all these things are the ones that can bring in the luxury items. So to 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 well, I mean to keep the appetite in these luxury things, yeah. Then they will turn it back again to their workers. They may they will say, okay, you know what? Because I want to live my life, I can't keep employing ten to fifteen or twenty people. I need to because I'm being taxed in my luxury items. I need to reduce my works my my, my work strength. And so they will send other workers into unemployed uh, market. So in as much as I agree. But what I think the government have not been able to do, uh, uh, Justin, is that we've not been able to cash the informal sector into the tax bracket. If we are able to cash the informal sector into the tax bracket, then we would have seen the kind of revenue that we're getting. And then that will also help government to be able to fund their budgets and then state government and others will be able to get more, more, more returns from the federation account, be able to pay salaries. But again, for you to get the informal sector, you need to give in something to get in something. Then for that, you need to build infrastructure for them. You need to begin to see how you, they can begin to assess soft loan. When I talk the informal sector, I'm talking about the guy that is driving, driving Kekena Pep, talking about the guy that owns a barbing salon, okay. I'm talking of the petty trader, I'm talking of the one, the woman that has a shop in the market. How much have you been able to generate 
taxes from those people. If you are able to do that, I'm telling you that means you are captured, capturing about 80% of Nigeria. And if 80% of Nigeria are captured in the tax bracket, definitely, I think all these economic challenges we have been facing, we could be seeing light at the end of the tunnel. So when they say widening the tax bracket in government time, is taxing people like me and you again. They will tax us the more. That's the only way they widen it. When Nigerian governments, they want to widen the tax bracket. They are not thinking of, okay, we want to widen the tax bracket to get more people into the tax net and so that we can get more Nigerian paying taxes. And those Nigerians will begin to see what these taxes are, 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 are achieving, what these taxes are doing to their economy. We have good roads. We have power. You are not providing for yourself. So you can't be taxing a woman that has it, a hairdressing salon and yet he has to go and buy four at 700 to power his generator. So why are you collecting taxes from so so I'm saying we need to give in something to get something from them. All right, on a final note, Mukta, my, my directors are asking me to run away from the yes, studio as it were. That's on a, on a lighter note. So having said all of that now, I just want us to just talk about something as we wrap up um, the show now, vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the issue of um, CNG buses and uh, maybe other sort of palliatives uh, for, you know, for the, the masses as it were. We say we are yet to see uh, these buses, and um, would they in any way cushion any of um, this challenge that we've been had to uh, go through in the past five months? Yeah, they will. But again, we have to look. I'll still come back to the challenge. CNC, uh, CSU buses, when the CNG buses, when they come in, they drop you. If you are walking, you, you I know your office. The, the, the CNG buses will not come and drop you at the doorstep of your office. Mm. So by the time they drop you in the bus stop, how do you get, Do you will you trek from that place to your office? Mm. So if you are using that also, they have to also be looking at many means of transportation also because again, uh, the way our, 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 our road networks are, it's not as straightforward like when you drop, so few people will be able to drop there and trek to their offices. Mm. So we need to look at that. I think it's a good, it's a good, it will reduce it, the, 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 right. the cost of transportation. It will make more people to keep their car at home and want to go. But again, like I said, even when we are doing that, they should also think about the mini transportation within the locality, mm. not just within the cities. So if the CNC buses, are there going to be those buses, CSG buses that will be, right. will be used to carry food uh, item from the villages to Lagos so that it will bring the cost of those food items cheaper so that we can get it cheap or mm. it's just a means of transportation within urban city. All right. We need to look at the structure of what we're about to do. All right. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Mukta uh, Mohammed, for all of uh, the useful insight that you always uh, profile when we talk about these economic issues. We do appreciate all of them. Thank you, Justin. All right. And that's the size of the show for uh, this morning. My name is Justin Akadonia. Many thanks for being a part of the show. Return again at the same time uh, next time. Bye for now.